From mighty archangels to seraphim singing endless praises, the diversity and function of angels continue to inspire and amaze people throughout the centuries. These spiritual beings not only serve God, but also play vital roles in protecting and guiding human beings. If you're interested in this type of content about biblical teachings, please support me by subscribing and don't forget to hit the bell so you won't miss any of our upcoming videos. Number 1. Where do angels reside? Heaven is the dwelling place of angels, as angels belong solely to God. The best definition of heaven is that it is where God resides. Heaven is my throne, says God. In the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 10, it reads, See that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Number 2. How many angels are there? There isn't an exact count in the scriptures, but there is ample evidence that they make up a vast multitude. In the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 11, John states that he saw myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands of angels around the throne. Other Bible translations use phrases like myriads of myriads and millions to describe the number of angels in heaven. To put this in context, an average football stadium in the United States accommodates about 50,000 people. To accommodate a hundred million people, it would take 2,000 stadiums of that size. The total number of angels seen by John could have exceeded a hundred million. 10,000 was the largest numerical figure used in Greek. 10,000 times 10,000 might be John's way of describing an immensely large army of angels. The book of Hebrews describes an army of angels in heaven that is too numerous to count. Hebrews chapter 12 verses 22 to 24 reads, But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to innumerable angels in festal gathering, and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. Other Bible translations use words like innumerable myriads and thousands upon thousands to describe this great throng of angels. Various passages in the Bible refer to angels as stars. In Daniel chapter 8 verse 10, it grew great even to the host of heaven, and some of the host and some of the stars it threw down to the ground and trampled on them. Revelation chapter 9 verse 1, and the fifth angel blew his trumpet, and I saw a star fallen from heaven to earth, and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit. Job chapter 38 verses 7 and 8. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy, or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb. There are too many angels to count if they are like the stars in the sky. According to Deuteronomy, Chapter 33, verse 2. The Lord came from Sinai and dawned from Seir upon us. He shone forth from Mount Paran. He came from the ten thousands of holy ones with flaming fire at his right hand. How many are the ten thousands? The primary definition of myriad as an adjective is countless or innumerable. Psalm, chapter 68, verse 17. The chariots of God are twice ten thousand, thousands upon thousands. The Lord is among them, Sinai is now in the sanctuary. Clearly, the author struggles to estimate the number of existing angels. Number three, when were angels created? Angels are likely older than anything in the world as we know it. In the Old Testament, the Lord told Job that when the earth was created, angels were already present to celebrate. Job chapter 38 verses 1 to 7. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Dress for action like a man. I will question you and you make it known to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy? Job was not present when the earth was formed, 
but the angels were, and they were having fun too. As a result, angels are very likely older than anything in the world as we know it. Number four, do angels die? The angel Gabriel appeared to the prophet Daniel in chapter nine of Daniel. Over 500 years later, the same Gabriel appeared to Zechariah, the father of John the Baptist. In the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 12 to 17, when Zechariah saw him, he was startled and gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He is never to drink wine or other fermented drink, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. And he will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And in Luke chapter 20, verse 36, we read, Nor can they die anymore, for they are equal to the angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. As spiritual beings, angels do not experience sickness, aging, or eventual death. One day we too will be immune to these afflictions. Both we and the angels will have eternal citizenship in God's heavenly kingdom. Number five, are angels spirits? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14 describes them as ministering spirits. Are they not all ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? It is likely their spiritual nature that allows angels the continuous proximity to God that they enjoy. Number six, are angels omnipresent, omnipotent, or omniscient like God? Angels have many limitations in their spiritual state that God does not. For example, angels cannot be in more than one place at a time, unlike God, who is everywhere at once. Only God's whereabouts are infinite. He is omnipresent. And as powerful as angels are, they lack God's omnipotence. They have no power of their own and are powerless without God. They can only use the power that God transmits through them. Angels also have limited knowledge. According to Jesus, the angels do not know the timing of his second coming to the world, as stated in Matthew chapter 24, verses 35 and 36. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. But God in heaven sees the end from the beginning and can communicate his plans to whom he wishes. Only he is omniscient, all-wise, and knows everything. Number seven, are all of God's angels the same? Each angel has its own job description and is responsible for carrying out God's will. Let's look at some of the terms the Bible uses to refer to angels to learn more about their various types and tasks. Hosts. Throughout the Bible, angels are called the hosts of the Lord. The word host is derived from the Hebrew word saba in the Old Testament and the Greek word stratia in the New Testament. Both terms refer to a well-trained army ready for war. God's angels are prepared to respond to every desire and command from him. Seraphim, singular seraph, is simply a word that means burning or bright. The seraphim are mentioned as angelic beings only in Isaiah chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to one another, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. What Isaiah saw was a God who is holy to the third degree. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The angelic beings uttering these words were not stuttering. The triple repetition was for emphasis. God is holy, meaning he is separate or distinct. God is light and there is absolutely no darkness in him. He is perfect, pure and just. The holiness of God is the focal point of his character. 
It is the source of all his other attributes. Therefore, his anger against sin is a holy wrath. His supremacy over the universe is holy. His love for the world is pure. If God is anything, he is holy. The prophet saw a God who has authority over all aspects of life. The seraphim shouting eternal praises had six wings, four for worship and two for work. This suggests that when we prioritize worship over work, our work becomes more fruitful. Spending time in the holy presence of God will help us understand and live out the perspective of his kingdom. The foundations of the temple shook with the power of the angels' voices, and the temple was filled with smoke, a reference to God's glory. Isaiah was so overwhelmed that he cried out, Woe to me! I am ruined! The word ruined means falling apart. So Isaiah felt as if he was disintegrating, coming undone before a holy God. The prophet was therefore in despair. I am a man of unclean lips. Isaiah, despite being a significant and prominent prophet, dedicated to God's service, felt his own inadequacy and sinfulness in the holy presence of God. In this reality, Isaiah admitted his impurity. As the word seraphim is simply a descriptor, it may be that seraphim are simply flaming beings, who may or may not be a distinct type of angel. Cherubim, unlike other angels, never deliver messages from God to people. Cherubim first appear in the Bible in the Garden of Eden, after Adam and Eve were expelled from paradise. God sent cherubim with flaming swords to guard the tree of life, so the Lord God banished him from the Garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. After he drove the man out, he placed on the east side of the Garden of Eden cherubim and a flaming sword flashing back and forth to guard the way to the tree of life. Genesis chapter 3 verses 20 to 24. God did something gracious in response to all this. He expelled man from the garden, replacing him with a cherub wielding a flaming spinning sword. This was the kindest thing God could have done. If Adam and Eve had eaten from the tree of life while they were sinners, they would have been trapped in that sinful state and its consequences for the rest of their lives. God also provided them with a covering of redemption through the sacrifice of an animal. Cherubim are mentioned numerous times in the Bible. After the expulsion of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden, cherubim were placed to guard the entrance. The vast majority of references to cherubim are in connection with the Ark of the Covenant, as the likeness of two cherubim adorned the lid of the Ark. The Ark, made of acacia wood, was the first furnishing of the tabernacle. It was to be covered with pure gold and have poles inserted through rings on the sides to allow the priests to carry it without touching it. The lid or cover was called the mercy seat. On top of it were two golden cherubim, glorious angelic beings, facing each other. Inside the ark, Moses was to place the tablets of the testimony, that is, the two stone tablets on which God wrote the Ten Commandments. As a result, the Ark was also known as the Ark of the Testimony. God manifested His presence above the mercy seat. The Ark was considered by Israel to be God's throne on earth, with God seated above the mercy seat, between the cherubim. 1 Samuel chapter 4 verse 4, So the people sent men to Shiloh, and they brought back from there the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Hosts, who dwells between the cherubim. And the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were there with the Ark of the Covenant of God. David sings a song of praise to God, in which he says that God, Psalm chapter 80 verse 1, Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who sit enthroned between the cherubim, shine forth. According to 2 Samuel chapter 22 verse 11, he rode on a cherub and flew, he soared on the wings of the wind. When Ezekiel witnesses the glory of God leaving the temple, he also sees cherubim carrying God's throne. The cherubim are described in verse 14 as having four faces, that of a cherub, a human, a lion, and an eagle. However, as angels are fundamentally spiritual beings, it is possible that they simply appeared to Ezekiel in this form for that specific revelatory vision. In the Bible, only one archangel is mentioned, Michael. He is mentioned in Jude chapter 1 verse 9. 
But even the Archangel Michael, when he was disputing with the devil about the body of Moses, did not dare to condemn him for slander, but said, The Lord rebuke you. The voice of the Archangel is heard in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, without mention of his name. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Revelation chapter 12 verse 7 describes a war between Michael and his angels and the devil and his angels. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought back. In Daniel chapter 10, verses 13 and 21, and Daniel chapter 12, verse 1, Michael is described as a princely angel. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Daniel chapter 10, verse 13. But the prince of the Persian kingdom resisted me 21 days. Then Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me because I was detained there with the kings of Persia. Number 8. Angels were created to live for eternity. God's word tells us that angels do not experience death. Luke chapter 20 verses 34 to 36. Jesus replied, the people of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are considered worthy of taking part in that age and in the resurrection from the dead will neither marry nor be given in marriage, and they can no longer die, for they are like the angels and are children of God, being children of the resurrection. Number 9. Angels should not be worshipped. Sometimes, angels are mistaken for God by humans and worshipped in the Bible but this is rejected because they should not be worshipped. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, Do not do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus. Worship God, for it is the spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. Revelation chapter 19 verse 10. Number 10. Angels have free will. Angels have the ability to exercise their own will. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 12 to 14. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn. You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. You said in your heart, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit enthroned on the mount of assembly, on the utmost heights of the north. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. Jude chapter 1 verse 6. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority, but abandoned their own home. These he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. Number 11. Angels express emotions like joy and desire. In the Bible, angels exult in joy, feel desire, and display a variety of emotions. When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy, Job chapter 38 verse 7, it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves but you when they spoke of the things that have now been told you by those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. Even angels long to look into these things. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 12. Number 12. Angels were created to glorify and worship God the Father and God the Son. We see that angels are created to worship God. Revelation chapter 4 verse 8. And the four living creatures, each of them with six wings, are full of eyes all around and within. And day and night they never cease to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Hebrews chapter 1 verse 6. And again, when God brings his firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. Number 13. Which angels are specifically named in the Bible? The scriptures mention two angels by name. Michael. Michael is the only archangel named in the Bible. It is widely assumed that Michael's voice will be heard to announce Christ's return and the rapture of the church. 
In the final conflict of the age, Michael and his angels will triumph over Satan and all the forces of darkness, according to Revelation chapter 12, verses 7 and 8. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought back, but they were not strong enough, and there was no longer any place for them in heaven. Gabriel. Gabriel means mighty one of God, and in Luke chapter 1 verse 19, Gabriel describes himself as one who stands in the presence of God. Gabriel is a special messenger angel who brings only good news. At the end of the Babylonian captivity, he responded to Daniel's prayer. Number 14. How many angels challenged God and followed Satan? The third angel sounded his trumpet, and a great star, blazing like a torch, fell from the sky, on a third of the rivers, and on the springs of water. The name of the star is Wormwood, Revelation chapter 8 verses 10 and 11. There is strong evidence that Satan managed to seduce a third of the angels to join his rebellion. Revelation chapter 12 verse 4 states, His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And we know from the use of the word stars in the book of Revelation that stars refer to angels. When it comes to the things of God, many Christians today lack reverence and a sense of mystery. My hope is that as we gain respect for the mysteries surrounding God's angels, this presumption begins to be corrected. When we honestly investigate the amazing things the scriptures tell us about them, we are drawn closer to God rather than being distracted from Him. And I believe that anyone who enters a study on angels with a high regard for God will come out with an even higher regard for Him. All honor and glory to the God of angels. I hope you enjoyed the video. If this content was valuable to you, please support me with your subscription so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos, share it with people you know, like it, and leave your opinion in the comments. This helps the video reach more people. Together, we can enlighten more minds and expand our understanding. Thank you for being here and may God bless you.